Welcome. Uh, I am doing something a little bit different than I usually do. I have thought about doing a podcast of sorts. I have mentioned doing something like this uh, in at least one other stream. Something what inspired me was... Uh, something reminded me of the Mass Effect, especially the, specifically the, the scene where you try to romance both partners. Uh, that happens whether you're male Shep or female Shep, but before I start that. Um, so the idea of this podcast is I kind of want to take, maybe not so much an alternative take, but a, I don't know, a little more nuanced take about morality and social norms uh, as conveyed in certain video games. Uh, the polyamory one was my first idea. And subsequent ones would include uh, like the weird extremes in the Fable series. Like the weird implications that it has. Their, their idea of morality. Um, which, mind you, they did more of it in a gameplay sense more than in a, in a sense of beliefs that they did but when you really break down like the kind of things that it punishes you for or like grades you for in terms of good or evil it comes off as really really weird but um I just also wanted to say that this is not necessarily a what's the uh <laughs> You have a little more of an object. Try to be objective about this, and this is not going to be like a criticism. This is not going to be a ridicule of how certain things are depicted in these kinds of games. Uh, I'm certainly not going to say how dare these people, because in the end, this is all about their creative, their creative ideas, their artistic uh, sense or uh, liberties. So, so this is more like wishes of how at least maybe how I would uh, take, uh, take these kind of topics so like I said the first the first idea that I had was again is going to be as you can see here it's going to explore the concept of polyamory and how it's somewhat approached in when I say somewhat you, you'll understand what I mean in Mass Effect uh, particularly the first game so, first I want to uh, get this out of the way. I uh, just want to make sh crystal clear uh, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about polyamory. Uh, I'm not referring to polygamy, which is multiple uh, marriage partners. I don't really have that much of a, that much of a take on it, uh, except that I noticed... Usually that kind of thing is usually done for less than moral reasons, like, maybe not moral reasons, I don't know. Usually when you think of polygamy, you usually think of, like, Mormons, or maybe some other cultures of, like, arranged marriages, such like that. And that's not what I'm going to go into. This is purely relation... So the relationship... Those kind of relationships are usually more out of purpose than they are about actual emotion. Polyamory is purely, when I refer to it, purely out of uh, for, for emotional reasons, romantic reasons. The idea of having multiple partners that you care for, and vice versa. And I think that's a, I, I think it's kind of an important thing to look, explore a little bit in that sense because. I noticed more and more people subscribing to the idea of polyamory. Uh, I myself, myself included. I'm not necessarily in, not really been in a polyamorous relationship, but I am more than open to one. Uh, I would, I would more more than likely want to be be someone's unicorn. I doubt that's going to happen, especially because that's there's a reason why they call it a unicorn. Basically, the, the, the trope is that, like, a couple approaches a third person, usually a woman, and say, hey, do you want to join our couple? Do you want to become a thruple? 
And usually when it's done in like a heteronormative sense, it's usually not really shown as as like a thing that works out well. I, I'm sure maybe it does work out in a lot of times, but it's also often depicted and discussed with people as something that isn't. Uh, this is going to be... I should also point out that this is going to be mostly looked at in a less than heteronormative sense. I, as a queer person, and somebody that subscribes to polyamory. That's the kind of bent I'm going to take on this. Again, I'm not going to say that these kind of things should be more or less queer in the future. Like these kind of games that, the, that I'm going to talk about. Again, in the end, these games are... I think should, should the artistic intent of the creators should be first and foremost when it comes to these kinds of things. This is more me like pointing out that the things that these kind these kind of the, the things that these games kind of imply don't necessarily mesh with how things are today. And I also find like a little kind of weird inconsistencies and a little, little, little weird <sighs> contrivances, I guess I could say. Um, like I said, I was. Recon I was reminded this most of from the first Mass Effect game. Now, in the first Mass Effect game, whether or not you're playing as the male or female Shepard, you have your choice of two partners. Um, if you're playing as male Shepard, it's Liara and Ashley. And if you're playing as female Shepard, it's Liara and... Wow, I forgot his name. The <laughs> there, there's a, there was a male partner in your group. I can't believe I forgot his name. Eh, whatever. Most people are, well. I think it started with a K, Kalen, something like that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, the goober guy, yeah. Uh, wait, is there a chat? Is that coming up? Yeah, yeah, the, the guy's a toll goober. I, I, wouldn't, I don't think I'm the only one who forgets the guy's name. I think most people don't choose him. You're, you're kind of, I mean, in a romantic sense, you're kind of forced with him if, uh, you're playing as female Shepard. This was a game that... Uh, also, the, the, the thing that happened with the Mass Effect game, or at least the first Mass Effect game, is that it was heavily criticized by mostly conservative media types when it came to relationships. Uh, there was a lot of scare that this game was going to have hardcore sex in it. And it was going to be like porno that they're selling to kids. Like, you can like search online for like Fox News talking about Mass Effect, and it is such a fucking... It, it, it's, it's typical... Uh, what should we call it? it it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely like... Uh, like scare media. You know what I mean? Scare news media. Like, this is what they're selling to your children. You know, that kind of shit. Uh, so... There, I think there was originally going to be more... Hey, Luna. As you see, I'm starting here. There was originally, I think there was going to be, they were going to expand a little more into the romance, uh, romance quests of the first Mass Effect, but they kind of had to tone it down because of the media. Because you had a lot of, mo like, again, mostly conservative types telling how they're going to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can go, like, ah, uh, yes, I should blame the game, which has an 18-plus rating, explicitly said it's not for kids, rather than blame my own parenting decisions. Yeah, that's, I mean, I could go on and on about that. That's been a thing. Uh, for fucking forever. Um, the early 90s was, like, the height of that bullshit. But that's another time for another, that's another discussion for another day. So, I think originally, yeah, this game was gonna have more relationships, and even... Even in the first game, the idea of a same-sex relationship was kind of scandalous because, again, you are able to choose Liara whether or not you're playing as male or female Shepard. Uh, I'm going to bring up... So, this is the scene in particular. If you try to choose, you could pursue a relationship with both of them. And if you do, eventually this scene will pop up where they confront you. So, I'll just... Uh... Miss Williams... Commander, we need to talk. If we do not resolve this situation now, I am afraid things might become... awkward. Oh, awkward, huh? I hope we can keep this civilized. I do not want things to become unpleasant. 
Because it's been so pleasant between us lately. Look, somebody in this room needs to make a choice. It ain't me, and it ain't you. Maybe we should try to work this out. I think we must. I may not know much about human relationships, but I understand the concept of jealousy. Jealous? Of you? You're not even our species. Perhaps that is why you feel threatened. I am a rival unlike any you have faced before. <laughs> Hostility is a common reaction to the unfamiliar. Doctor, you keep smartassing me? I'll show you what my hostile reaction is like. I won't have my crew fighting. I agree, Shepard. Which is why you must choose. Ashley or me. <laughs> We're not married, Shepard. You want to get involved with some alien? Go ahead. It's none of my business. You're special to me, Ash. Yeah. Kind of hard to feel special while you're always chatting with your little blue friend on the side. Or is that my role? This is exactly what I was trying to avoid. I never should have told you of my feelings, Shepard. I have put you in a terrible position. I am sorry. You were right to tell me, Liara. I feel the same way. I've heard enough. We're resolving this now, Shepard. Me or her. Why do I have to make a choice? Maybe the three of us could... Uh... In your dreams, Commander. I hope you two, or however many you end up with, will be happy together. If you don't mind, I need to clean my gear. I feel bad for her, Shepard. I hope she'll be okay. I'll go talk with you later. <laughs> <Ramon. laughs> Let's cool down. I suppose you're right. I'm sorry you were put in this position, but I'm glad you chose me. I don't believe we should continue this discussion here in the comm room, Shepard. You know where to find me if you want to have a more private conversation. So yeah, if you try to pursue both, Ashley says fuck this and leaves, and I think at this point you're locked in with Liara. And all the games would do that, where it's like, if you try to pursue any any number of them, more than one, uh, a scene like that will pop up, and you're forced to choose between one of them. Uh, later, I think, I think in the later games they handle this a little better. Uh, in the third one, I don't even know if there's a scene like that, because there's so many romantic partners, and like, and they're not even ones that you could, they're not part of your party. Dude, my mom let my sis play GTA as a kid, and she just I mean, everything that happens is always exaggeration of things. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's so untrue to life and such. And, I mean, you can say that about all media. Like, every, all, like, all, like, even war films. It's, like, with, the, I guess, with, like, the exception of, like, the opening, the, uh, the Normandy scene of Save It Private Ryan, where people are just dying left and right. And it's not some, t I mean, sometimes it's handled with a little bit of emotional, or, uh, 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 it's, it's, sometimes there's a bit of an exaggeration, but it, I'm pretty sure that also happened, actually happened in that, in that invasion. Um, there's a part where a guy gets shot in the helmet, and then he takes off his helmet, and it's like, he's making this face like, oh my god, this helmet saved me, and then he gets shot in the head and dies, right? So, yeah, explain to your kid that media is meant to cause a sensation. Yeah, exactly. It's like, some time ago, uh, on one of the MTV Movie Awards, Madonna and Britney Spears kiss on stage. It's like, a, there's a little bit of tongue, but it, that was it. it. That was it. It was a kiss. Uh, Fox News ran with that, and a lot of conservative types were saying, you know, and if they would be like, how do I explain this to my kids? How do I explain two women kissing? And it's like, you could say to them, like, well, it was, it was there to shock you. Like, they did it to get attention. Like, that's, like, at the very least, you, obviously, it, 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 who gives a shit? It's two pop stars kissing. But at the other same time, at the same time, it's two pop stars kissing on stage. It's meant to elicit a reaction. So even if you were completely against 
homosexuality, same-sex relationships, or any or public defa- displays of affection, you have some moral outrage to it. You do have an explanation to your kid, and that is they did it for shock value. And then you can you can segue that into your Jesus talk, like you but you you can't, which again I don't dis, which I don't agree with. But the but the argument, how do I explain this to somebody? It's not an argument. <laughs> it's, you can't... Ju- Again, this was just all a ploy to bring down MTV, because that's what they do. So... But I digress. Now, again, let me reiterate, I don't mean this as a... as a ridicule. Or whatever. Although I do believe... Actually, I do find it kind of weird. The game almost slut-shames you. I can't help but feel like you're being slut-shamed. A little, just a little bit. When you when you go with that scene. Because, like, all, they, the both of them just... Well, Liara is a little more open to this. But that's because, like, her race are like that. They're open to, like, every alien race. because Well, mostly because of biological reasons. Like, they don't have to... The way they procreate is... They're... Kind, they're when they come to proc- procreation, they're mostly asexual because all they do is just take, they just take genetic DNA from their partner and then make a kid out of that. <laughs> they could, I think they could do that by themselves. They don't necessarily need a partner, but and then like they're like empaths, so they can form better emotional connections with other races than other races could. So that's explained a little bit better. And Ashley's a racist. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Ashley is not the greatest fan. Of, she's not out and out racist, racist. She's not calling for like the eradication of other species. But she is like humans first more than anything else. So more of a nationalist. If Earth, Earth was a nation, if that makes sense. Like in that sense. Uh, in fact, she criticizes you in the second game. Where, where you are resurrected by Cerberus, which is a pro-human organization, she actually approaches you and says, like, hey, I know they, like, resurrected you, but I don't really approve of them. They're very extremist. And also, I don't like you because since you were resurrected by them, I think you are on their leash for in a certain way, either, uh, either naturally or unnaturally. Like, maybe they conditioned you in some way, or, or at the very least, you feel obligated to them because they resurrected you. And then she leaves. She's, the, she just, it's literally like a cameo. <laughs> she just comes in. It's like, hey, it's me, Ashley. Uh, yeah, you suck. Bye. I must go. Does the Bioware, Bioware leave where she just walks off camera and then she disappears. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, so there is a bit of an explanation on why the two of them would not get along. Because, again, Ashley's a bit of a racist. <laughs> In the second game, it's handled a little bit better. Both of the female partners fucking hate each other. Um, for different reasons. In fact, I will... Let me see. So you have Jack and Miranda in the second game. Not only is there, like, a romantic impasse, they, they, there's that whole, like, loyalty thing where, like, you do a mission for them, and then that means that they're more likely to survive the, uh, the last mission. And so, if you don't have high enough Renegade or Paragon points, you're forced to choose between one of them, and then whoever you don't choose loses their loyalty to you. So, which means you don't get their there are extra powers and they're more likely to die in the in the last mission right cuz that was the whole thing where it's like yeah your your characters could die at the end including you if you don't do enough stuff you can die and then uh you're not able to import that character into 3 i don't know if they thought that they weren't going to be able to make a 3 that's kind of a weird way to do that i would mean, imagine that in 3 that they would do that but anyway that's that's why it's the point so i don't know if i'm going to show the whole thing but basically, it's Shepard approaching each of them. And then... 
Okay, so this is just the um, just the initial conflict because in the game, after the initial conflict, you have to approach each of them separately and then tell them, "Hey, uh, I'm loyal to you, and I'm going to break up with the other person, or I'm breaking up with you and going with the other guy." And they're like, "Okay." But I'm not gonna. We're not. We're, this is not gonna happen unless you tell the other person that, that they're broken off. Like again, you're their fucking messenger pig. But anyway, but let me go back to the first one. Like I said, the game feels like it. Li you know, even even though there's a good justification of why the two of them won't want each other and or w w share with you, um, I still feel like it's a little bit immature. Now, if you'll allow me in a bit of self. Anyway, you'll allow me to self-indulge. When I was first doing, uh, when I was started to do writing um, as my character, when I was doing this for potentially um, a serial or a novel or whatever, uh, the first thing that I wrote was kind of a critique of this very scene. And what Raven, the character, would do in this scenario. If you don't know, Raven Cassidy, the character, is a bard, a half-elf bard. In this universe, half-elves and elves, they're kind of like... Well, elves are kind of like Vulcans, and half-elves are... A, they're basically emotionally different than humans. B both elves and half-elves. And half-elves especially are able to share emotions with more people than humans can. I don't think it's a biological... I'm probably not going to set it as, like, a biological thing. It's very... I made it pretty ambiguous because he himself doesn't really understand his biology because there's very few half-elves, and also he's an orphan. I think it's more like they're just more open because of their kind of sort of... Not segregation, but they're kind of their ostracization or something like that. Uh, Luna says, My mom explains sex by saying, Look, one day you're going to fall in love and the brain chemicals will start running and you'll want to be intimate with a person. I don't care with who or what you do that, and I don't need the details. Just be safe. Remember, you can always say no. Your education will give you the technical details. And that was all the birds and the bees talk I got, and I don't understand why Americans don't handle it like this. My mother gave me a very similar thing, although it wasn't until, like, my, my late teens... And then that, like, second part of, hey, remember, consent is important, or <laughs> be sure to say no, like, that wasn't a part of it, too, because men are not really told that. Um, if anything, men are usually saying, hey, respect the other person's consent, um, but that doesn't happen as often as I think it should. But yeah, my mom was like, yeah, you, you, you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, just remember, yeah, you're being safe, right, Raven? Like, yeah. And then that was it. So, it was a pretty late talk anyway. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much how it handled with me. So, again, I wrote this short story kind of as a way to express my feelings. So, this is, again, this is more to... Sh I think this will give her a better idea of how I view relationships, especially polyamory. I basically rewrote that scene if Raven was the main character. So. Where Raven is confront... Conf <laughs> where Raven is confronted about a conflict between two romantic partners like that scene in Mass Effect 1. I was a little on the nose with this because, again, this was just... This was mostly for me at the time. Raven, chilling in his quarter quarters, is approached by Ashley and Liana. Liana starts, Ash, Raven, we need to talk. We have to squash this out before things get awkward. Raven responds, a bit confused, with a touch of frustration. What do you mean, awkward? Oh, awkward, huh? Ash interjects. Lay responds, I was hoping we can be, we can resolve this civilized. I do not want hostility between us. Ash, having enough of Liana's shit. Like it's going to be so calm for us, right? She turns to Raven. The bard has to make a choice. Raven realizes what's happening. He's been given a familiar ultimatum. For countless times, he'd been previously called a player, a fuckboy, a user, and a loser. He's had enough of having to be called out like this by otherwise intelligent adults. Raven became a tad ashamed of himself. Not for his polyamory, but for failing to, see, failing to foresee the conversation he is now being forced to have. He sighs before saying, I should have seen this coming. 
Ash and Liana start arguing with each other about who is being jealous. Liana accuses Ash of being selfish for wanting Raven for herself. Ash, tired of Liana's smart acidness, gives up and proclaims, This is stupid. Raven was hoping for an ideal outcome of engaging with both, either simultaneously or consecutively, but more on the latter only because he doesn't wish to be stereotyped as the bard that always wants three ways. He knew that it wasn't going to happen by, by this point, so now this became about defending his romantic and sexual lifestyle. I will make choices as an adventurer, not a love... Ash interrupts. In your dreams, bard. She looks towards Lei. I hope you too, or however many you end up. This was the end of the ultimatum. Raven was not going to be shamed for his desires. E fuck enough! Are we teenagers fighting to go steady? Seriously? Would I ever imply this was going to be exclusive? Ash is taken back by Raven's burst of anger, followed by the realization that he doesn't see her for what she has, what she wanted. Am I not special to you? I should have known not to fall for a bard. Raven takes a deep breath and continues. Ash, you are special to me, but so are Liana, Kate, Briat, Bradley, Deanna, and Mike, and Mike, and Mike. Ash and Liana look at each other bewildered. Raven notices the woman's expressions and interjects himself. Look, there are a lot of Mikes in New York, all right? Wait, and who else? Oh, and Corey, the Silver Dragon Guardian of Baltimore, Liberta <laughs> Libertes, President Quayle, and yes, even Jared DeFill, the Dark Lord of the Cork of Delaxley. But I appreciate every partner of mine. Believe me or don't, doesn't matter to me. If I haven't made myself clear about having things b between us be non-exclusive, that's on me. In the future, I'll be absolutely transparent that I'm going to do this among multiple people. I don't belong to anyone, and no one belongs to me. Ash interrupts. So you're, meant to, you're admitting to being a loveless man whore, Chamberlain? Raven's been compared to all the usual Casanovas throughout his life, but none more than Will Chamberlain. He appreciates that particular comparison, because Raven played basketball a lot in his youth, but he'll never be at Will's level. He's a good baller and lover, but not Will Chamberlain good. But that's besides the point. Raven's love of basketball doesn't compare to the love he shares with each of his partners. <sighs> While Raven's desperate to make his point, he's also desperate to remain collected if his argu argument is to be taken seriously. Still a bit heated, he responds, Gods almighty! How do you have such a limited take on sex and love? I swear, so many humans think so little about what I can and cannot feel. I'm pretty sure my kind handle relationships differently, and frankly, better than you people. Raven still hasn't got a firm grasp on his biology. He knows he's part elf, but he knows little about his lineage, for he was abandoned at birth. Not only that, elves make, us le make up less than a percent of the population of New York City and Long Island, and even less among the remainder of the country. What he does know is that elven are able to possess and share feelings far greater than humans. And Raven himself, for various reasons, enjoys having as many healthy, physical, and emotional relationships as possible. For one, sex is a way I connect with other people in this city, and I share emotions with every single person I hook up with. It's not the most committed of relationships, but it's still a relationship. Liana is now attempting to butt in. Is this your way of justifying using people? I don't fucking use people! Raven looks up, dr drastically shifting from anger to ponderation. Oh wait, maybe I do. I have flirted for people with ver for reasons besides the obvious from time to time. Raven looks back at Ash and Lee, raising his voice again. But I don't fuck anyone who doesn't want to fuck. I am up front with every person I'm intimate with. They are allowed to invest as little or as much as motion as they want, as long as they know they are not exclusive. In fact, I don't even have to inform most of my partners of that because they're smart enough to know beforehand. If they are not comfortable with that, I respect their decision and let them be on their way. But I will not be scolded for wanting just that because some people have a narrow preconception on what relationships ought to be. I can deal with disagreement with my late way of life, but I will not have any dumb fuck give me shit about it nor imply I do what I do underhandedly. Ash, still thinking she's entitled to objection. Well, I'm not going to be your fuck toy. Neither should Liana. Raven, reluctantly, acknowledge her complaints. Okay, one... Don't shove words in Liana's mouth. If she wants anything shoved there, that's her decision, not yours. Two, if you can't put your feelings between the two of you aside and enjoy a perfectly normal activity with me, there's the door. Otherwise, here's the bed. And no, it doesn't have to be the three of us at once. You just want, If you want a one-on-one, -on -one, here's my schedule book and a pencil. Feel free to jot down the time and date. 
Raven wasn't being sardonic when he said that. He actually handed him his schedule book before continuing. If you're both wanting to go right now, you're going to have to flip a coin or play rock, paper, scissors. But if you're going to continue to be immature about, immature about this, walk away and never speak of this again, because I don't appreciate being slut-shamed by other party members because I offered you a good time. Dismissed. Raven is, isn't exactly the leader of the group, but if there was a time to assert what authority he had, it was this. Ash and Leanna remain little shits. <laughs> they look like they're about to give their last word disapproving Raven. He sees the look on their faces and refuses to give him the time of day. If you still think this is a good idea to bitch and moan, how about you instead stop wasting your breath, and more importantly, my time, and realize this conversation is long over. Get the fuck out of my room. Raven's eyes start glowing pink. He had committed himself to not using his thralling powers for sexual gain, but he won't hesitate to end a pointless argument through magic. They both get the idea before any influence is implanted, quickly turn around and leave the room. He knows he can't always get what he wants, but he will not be misconstrued by any means, through any means. Orgasms can wait. A bard's reputation cannot. The end. <coughs> so like I said, that was to... Let me take a drink. Yeah. <sighs> A little hard doing this by one person. <laughs> uh, I'm talking a little more than I usually do, so my throat's gonna get drier than usual. <sighs> so, like I said, that's just like my personal take. It's it's how I would write it if I did it. Again, I'm not going to, like, try to force this upon anybody. Again, it's their artistic choice or anything else. Eh, it's just, getting an, just giving an alternate perspective of things. And realizing... Now, in the... A thing that I had noticed throughout the series is that you almost never see any actual polyamorous relationship for anyone in the, in the universe. Which I find a little weird. And then uh, uh, Luna says, And then when I turned 14, I said, Mom, I'm done having periods. I want a birth control implant. I got it, and I go to the doctors every two years to refresh it so they don't have periods and can fuck safely whenever. Wherever, whenever. Yeah, I saw... I, they recently had that... I, I remember they, they had that pill that only gives you a period four times a year or something like that. And it's like... Man, that... <laughs> Well, guess what? You women have nothing to complain about now. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, you have no room to bitch now. <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, I was like, yeah, that must suck having to, to go through a thing every month. And then you get a pill that only allows you to do that like one every three. Only has you do that every three months. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I would fucking get that pill right away. Um. But, uh. I'm sorry. I uh So yeah, you don't you don't really see that kind of relationship anywhere. I I'm sure maybe I missed something. Th th those games are long as hell and I haven't played them in a long in quite a bit, but I don't remember for the life of me ever seeing any sort of polyamorous relationship. And the reason why that I wouldn't say bothers me, but the reason that stands out is because this game takes place hundreds of years in the future. Right? I think it takes place in like 2180 something. Uh, the only reason that space travel becomes, gets us that quickly is because they stumble upon the Mass Effect, the thing that allows, you know, FTL flight and all that. So they were kind of given, like, the monolith to, like, jumpstart human, uh, space travel. Although they do, they do mention, I, I thought there was a cute reference when, if you look at, if you go to, like, their codex or whatever, uh, it's... It mentions that humans bootstrapped their space travel because, you know, they, they've been going to the moon since the 60s. So it's not like space travel was this whole new thing once they discovered the Mass Effect field. It's just that that's just what jumped them light years ahead, literally and figuratively. Um, but again, still, this is a long time in the future. 
And it takes place in a world where, he, where aliens are fucking other aliens. So is it not the weirdest thing in the world if somebody says, I want to fuck more than one alien at a time? It, now, I understand why they would have this with the, the, uh, the playable character. Because um, game development is very hard. And even having one romance is a pretty arduous deal for programmers and writers and such. If you were to... So I can see why they would railroad you down one path. Because now... Because then if you had a, a choice to engage with multiple partners, then you have to write a scenario for each one of those. So, and, you know, even though these games are big-budgeted, you're, you're now, you're now uh, writing scenarios that are probably going to be engaged by a very small percent of the people playing, right? I know that polyamory isn't really accepted much in the heteronormative sense. But yeah, there's still a lot of people that might, like, fantasize that kind of thing. I know a lot of men would, so it's not the craziest thing. Have a whole harem of alien bitches, you know what I mean? Um, so I just thought that was a little weird. I know that it would be very popular because uh, there had been mods made. I think uh, I'm pr I'm pretty sure. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, so we got um Yeah, Poly Romance mod. Yeah, the, the mod lets you romance everyone, all that shit. Yeah. Let me uh Oh wait, let me just make sure I didn't like <laughs> dox myself when I uh put in that auto whatever. Let me try that again. Okay. I, I I sorry. I got a little bit paranoid for a second because I noticed it flashed a bunch in my in my toolbar or not the toolbar, the uh, URL bar. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure. I was like, is this something I'm gonna have to cut out of the vod? All right. Uh, but it doesn't look like. I have a mental grain in my arm that completely stops my period for three years. So whenever I start bleeding again, that's my cue to go to the doctor's office where they cut my, open my arm, remove the old rice grain capsule, place in a new one, and stitch up the cut, and then I just yell, see you again in three years. I did not know. I mean, I know about those, uh... What do they call them? IUDs? Those implants? But I feel, I think those are a little, a little more invasive, especially what they have to put them. When somebody goes into coma, does it just stop? That's a very good question. I would guess no. I'm by no means an expert. But if I had to guess, I imagine it's one of those things you would also have to take care of as uh, uh, just as much as like feeding the person and giving them oxygen and shit. Let's look that. You know what? I, re I just realized I have Google in front of me. I could look that up myself. Do, okay, here. Do people in comas poop? <laughs> I think we know the answer to that already. It periods. Okay, during a coma, the body's basic functions, including hormone production, continues to operate. Therefore, it is likely that a person will still experience their period while in a coma. Quora, somebody on Quora asks, would a woman girl still be having her menstrual cycle if she's in a coma? Uh... Sharinara Sundar Morthy, a postgraduate uh, MD of pharmacology, says, yes, a female in coma will still have her menstrual cycle and her monthly periods. It might be irregular, and the flow might be high or low. Depends on the drugs administered. And level of stress in her body. 
Generally, extra absorbent pads are kept and changed every day. In coma, only the conscious brain functions are affected. Though the brain stops working, the other subconscious functions in the body, like digestion, excretion, circulation, will be carried on. As long as the hypothalamial pituitary ovian axis is intact, she will have her menstrual cycle. There are some cases where women who were essayed during coma have become pregnant. It also depends... <laughs> okay, that's a, that was a curveball right there, this is mentioned, but... I mean, I guess that is important information to let you know if if you, you, if you somehow have sex during a coma, which would definitely not be consensual, that you could still get pregnant. I, I... All right, I love these. Do you get a boner while you're in a coma? It's all right. Let's just get. Yeah, let's. Oh, eh, I don't, I'm not right. I'm not going to go through that shit. All right. Anyway. It's this is this is not the podcast about <laughs> whether or not you get periods and comas. It's just, it's just, no, this is about polyamory and, and video games. Let me do my podcast about video game polyamory. Um, although that was an interesting <laughs> that was an interesting distraction. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have much else to say. It's not an IUD. IUD go in your womb. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking of. That rice grain thing you're talking about, that's... I, I knew that was something different. I was like, I never heard of that. This just goes in the arm and distributes hormones to prank my body into thinking it's already had my period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize they had that. That's why it's like, oh, the IUDs are a little more invasive because they actually have to go inside you. Well, in your womb. It's not just something they just like, little put in your arm and go stitch, stitch, stitch. Think of it as like a family guy cut away. Boy, this is weird at that time. I got periods in my coma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Lois, I got a boner when I was in my coma. Remember? Uh. Oh, then it's the problem with this is that I'm getting, getting sidetracked. <laughs> So in the second Mass Effect game, it's a little bit... It's explained a little better because the two women in, in question fucking hate each other for reasons outside of romance. Like, one of them was part of Cerberus, and the other one was it Miranda. And then Jack was basically like a freak science experiment to give her all sorts of, you know, uh, powers and shit. And Miranda was also bi biologically engineered, but not in the same way. It was a little more... Well, it was treated a little better. Jack was, like, just basically being tort tortured, whereas Miranda was raised and trained to be the way she is. Can you but, yeah, I think this is... And then also, again, this doesn't just deal with romance. This deals with the... Like, their loyalty. Whether or not they'll survive the last mission and have their enhanced powers and shit like that. Um, IUDs can rust too, and I don't want to risk getting my pussy infected with rust and... Ooh. Ooh. Some reason that reminds me of fucking Phantom Pain <laughs> when they were going to torture Huey by injecting his fucking implants with that rust stuff, that stuff that instantly rusts metal. And I'm like, oh shit, like that would get into his bones and shit. And <laughs> what was that stuff called? Like Metallic Archaea or some shit? <laughs> uh. But yeah, so you kind of, and then in this one you, with Miranda and Jack, you kind of have to go to uh, to each of them alone and say whether or not you're going to stay with them or break up with the other person or vice versa, and then then you get your final decision. And then there's the the like, oh, I don't want to be used by both of you, like that doesn't really come up because it's about a deeper thing, right? It's not just a romance thing. 
So I'm not really going to go into that. Although you could just tell them. You, depending on whether or not you have Paragon or Renegade. If you have Paragon, you're like, hey, 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 cut it out. Save your anger for the bad guy, right? If you're Renegade, you have to say, hey, cut it out. I'm your fucking commander. <laughs> Stop acting like fucking children during this potentially suicidal mission, please? The fate of the universe is at stake, and you, you two are going to have your little bitchy thing like, hey, oh, I don't like you because of blah, 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 blah. And um, up until, here's the thing. The reason why I kind of call this the true neutral energy thing is that, like, like I said, this is not just going to be like a a look at morality and such in, like, say, like a queer sense or a, or a, um, hetero, a, a non-heteronormative sense. It's, it's going to be more about, like, middle grounds and alternative takes on things and such and how the renegade I mean the renegade was never sometimes the renegade option in, in Mass Effect is kind of seen as the evil one but because you are a good guy it's not they never say that you're evil they just say that you're out of control again which is why they call it the renegade option um I, I'm kind of I'm a little disappointed that the one where you tell them, hey, cut the shit, you're supposed to be professional, is the renegade option. It should just be your default option. Although the game, it, 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 this is the game's way of checking whether or not you have enough paragon or renegade. Because if you don't, you're forced to choose between one of them. Whereas if you have enough renegade or paragon points, you can say, hey, cut the shit for whatever reason. And then they're both still loyal to you. Rather have a... Rather... <laughs> Luna says, rather, ha rather have a grain of rice, like, sure, there's a 1 in 30 chance my body will reject it at some point, but in that case, my implant will just rise to the top and eventually fall out of my arm, and I have a fever during that process. Ooh! I mean, again, like, that, that's, that's a good alternative, <laughs> but the idea of something coming up through your skin and then saying, fuck you, I'm out! <laughs> like, whenever I, like, when I, and when I hear, hear of things being rejected, like, implants being rejected I thought that's exactly how I thought that they would be rejected because remember that episode of the Simpsons where like Bart he, he somehow gets a baboon's heart and then he prank, he pranks his schoolmates into thinking that he had one implanted and then he has it like jump out of his shirt and it's like oh my baboon heart's been rejected I actually thought that's partially how implants and uh replacements got rejected is that they literally just try to jump out at you. You know what I mean? I think I think more than likely, like in, in most cases, they just don't function. But yeah, as a kid, I thought, oh god, your heart would just jump out of your stomach. Or your chest. Uh... Yeah, so... Yeah, I, yeah, so I was just a little disappointed where it's like... You also, you also, um, seen this addressed in the short story I wrote, that, like, Raven tells the two, we're adults. We're adults. We're on an important mission. Can we not be teenagers? Please? Can we be adults about this? And again, they heighten the drama, because that's how you write drama. I'm trying to, like, subdue that a little bit, or subverse it by saying... Guys, in most cases, if implants get rejected, they turn spastic. Yeah, that's what I figured. Like, they, they just either just... They either just don't function or they do something else, but they don't jump out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like, you know, if I were to write that kind of shit, I would just be like, cut the shit. <laughs> just, just, guys, just cut the shit. We're adults. Come on, stop! Ha start acting like adults. Um, one of the later things, uh, episodes I'm gonna is speaking of cutting the shit. And the, another trope that I want to address is the "don't kill him, he's unarmed," even though he's a bigger, badder guy than all the people that you fought up to this point, but. Because he's unarmed and better dressed, 
please don't you shouldn't kill him it's best to get in the case they cause toxic toxic failure in your organs oh okay yeah oh i thought you meant like that they like quiver and shit and they go -da -da -da, you know in your body or some shit and then it, it's like you had a heart attack or some shit like that um but anyway so i was playing jedi or no no star wars jedi survivor earlier this year and up until this point, you are killing stormtroopers left and right. Now, mind you, they're trying to kill you too, so it's justified in that sense. You, you're stopping the bad guys from doing their thing, and you're killing stormtroopers and Sith. Makes sense. It's, you know, they don't try to go out of their way and say, like, ah, hey, what you're doing is bad because you're killing people. It's like, no, well, you know, it's, that's the point of the game. S oh, septic, not spastic. Oh. Septic, okay. Sorry. A little scatterbrained here. Um, so anyway, anyway, anyway. So there's a part in Jedi Survivor where you invade a, I believe a starship, uh, an Imperial starship. And again, just like in the rest of the game, you're killing stormtroopers less left and right. You're cutting them down, you're throwing them off ledges, you're force cho I don't know if you're force choking, but you're, you're doing Jedi shit to them and killing them. Cutting them with your lightsaber too. You're just doing horses. You're just doing you're just doing whatever. You're doing the, you're fighting the guys and you just do whatever. There's no there's no non-lethal option. You know what I mean? It's not like certain games where they might give you the option to not kill a dude. Just take him out. It's like, no, no, like, you go up there and you gank everyone that you fight. And presumably every person you get into a fight with is killed. Or at least, or, or, or very, very injured, or something. So, you go into, a, like, a, like a, a commander's office. And there's an Imperial officer. And first your guy, what's his name, Cal? Like like force pushes him out of the chair and then like does it does the pull and like guess how much my implant costs every year uh well saying you're out here in the in Europe I'm guessing like what three dollars fifty cents but uh yeah so wait 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 hold on hold on hold on hold on I've tried it <laughs> Oh, I was actually right. I was joking. I, I, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was exaggerating for it, it, humorously. I, I did, thought it'd be like fifteen bucks or twenty bucks, but I said three fifty as a joke. God damn it! Anyway, um. So yeah, so you get to the Imperial office, or commander's office, dude in uniform, he's got the fucking red and blue buttons on his, on his shirt, I guess they're supposed to be like medals, I don't know, you know what I mean, it's, it's, he's a highly decorated commander, officer, general guy, and at first you're like pushing and pulling this guy, slamming his head into the desk, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, fuck this guy up, but then he just knocks him out. And then Cal, at first, looks like he's a little bit upset for the way he did. He, like, looks at him in a weird way. And I'm like, dude, wh why would you be sad about this one guy? It turns out he wasn't. Uh, he, just gets the, he just gets the idea of, like, hey, I should take his clothes and I should, you know, impersonate this dude, which he does. And they're like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, because his, uh, his robot pal goes, like, BB-8 goes, Arr! like he's disappointed. And I'm like... Fucking don't do this shit. He's a bad guy. And so when I'm playing this on stream and I say like, oh, I thought they were going to like fucking shame him into killing this guy or, or hurting him. I was going to say like, dude, the guy, you've been killing stormtroopers left and right. But then you get to this one guy and because he's better dressed that it's like, eh, maybe we shouldn't kill this guy. I mean, yes, he's unarmed. But he's he he doesn't have a gun on him, but he is armed with something more dangerous, authority. He's the guy that tells the other guys to kill you. That's 
Yeah, if he's going to get in a fight with you right then and there... Yeah, it might be a little less than fair if you kill him, if he doesn't have a means to defend himself, but, like, this is... This isn't about fair war. This, there's no Geneva Convention. There's no... It, it's fucking Star Wars. It's not Earth Wars. Yeah, you know I mean? So, I just thought it'd be kind of... But, you know, they're going to push that kind of morality where it's like, well, we don't want him to be evil, so we can't just kill a dude outright with these... Whatever. Anyway. So, at first I was like, oh, good. Yeah, exactly. Rip his tongue out. Like, fucking do something. Like, fucking punish him. Cut one of his arms off. Cut his legs off. Like, this sounds sadistic, but, like, we're, we're dealing with... You know, this is not stuff I would ever suggest in real life. We're dealing with fantasy. Fucking fulfill... Fucking fulfill fantasy. You see a bad guy. You want to do bad things to him. Do bad things to the bad guy. Come on. Let, him, let me do bad things to the bad guy. Just this once. Disney. Um... Who owns Star Wars? Maybe they may not develop the game. EA did, but still. They're the, they're the final word of whether or not a guy does something. Does something bad. What the characters do and all that shit, but... <sighs> Excuse me. But then... A little bit later into that level... You... Tap into your darkness... And basically, it just, it's just a mean of giving you, like, an ultimate attack where, like, you have a meter that charges up. You're surrounded by stormtroopers, right? And it looks like they're about to fucking kill you, right? Because they're just surrounding you and all that shit. And then the screen says, click in both left and right to unleash your darkness or some shit like that. And then he just goes, Pwah! like, he just force pushes everybody. And basically, it just enhances your... Your force powers. Like, you just shove dudes right away. Like, you think I think you have, like, unlimited force or stamina... And you're just tearing through these people left and right. So you're you're murdering dudes even more so. And it's also implying that you're getting a little bit more evil. It that doesn't really happen. But it is saying, like, hey, you are becoming the killer. And you're reveling in it. And your whatever morals you had, you just kind of threw out the window because you're up against you're up against great odds. You know, you're you're fighting dozens of guys at once. You're fighting Sith that are, like, twice as big as you. And apparently, like, more powerful. So it's like, you kinda have to be a little dirty. You, got, you gotta be scrappy. And if that's not fair, that doesn't matter. You, you, you're the... You know what I mean? Like, you know, like... Yeah, the gen the ends don't always justify the means, but like you are you are the Jedi. You're the good guy. They're the bad guy. Do whatever. Fuck them. Again, it's fantasy, right? We're not dealing with like one army versus another. This is the reason why we have fucking you know Geneva Conventions and all that kind of shit for that kind of stuff because it's it's way more complicated in real life. But again, this is fantasy. Let's let me fulfill my fantasy of killing a dude. So you're just fighting again. You're you're killing more dudes left and right. You find that officer again, and you pull him towards you, and you look like you're force like have to force choke him. And then another uh, supporting character comes up to you, and she's and she's like, "Who who is this guy?" And he's like, "It's the motherfucker that tried to kill us. He sent the guy after us. Like he's he's the reason why we've been going through this shit." And he just looks like he's about to fucking crush this dude's head. And then she goes. Don't. You'll be going down the dark side if you kill him. It's one guy. It's one guy. We've been killing dozens and dozens of people on the way. What is one guy? I had this same exact rant when, when that got to that part. It's trying to tell you, like, like, like the moral is because this guy is better dressed. He has buttons on his shirt. He's not in armor. He's wearing a nice. He's wearing a nice suit with buttons on it. Don't kill him. Yeah, he's a good. He's fine. Like, no, that's that's fucking bullshit. I'm sorry. 
I don't know how else to explain it, but like that's like I said. It, uh, again, I don't want it to, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, he goes dark and he just kills whoever. It's like, no, this one dude, it's fine. Just kill this one guy. It's okay. He's bad. If you let him go, he's probably going to try to kill you again. Like I said, he's... Like, the stormtroopers that you killed up until this point, you can argue they're just following orders. Right? This guy gave the orders. He should be at the top of your list. I kind of have a problem with, like, war is... Because, like, war in real life is the powerful... Guy, it's the powerful commanding the le less powerful to kill each other, right? The, the people actually doing 99% of the fighting are the people that have very little agency in the war itself, right? They don't have a choice but to fight in the war and kill whoever, right? <laughs> and so, like, when there were these talks about, like, oh, how it's... Oh, it's bad... It, it's, it's, there, was, there, was, oh, there was also an article... Um, that ca uh, came out during the, the, the Ukraine invasion that says, like, why it would not be a good idea to assassinate Putin. It would be, and one of the reasons is, it would be, it would be wrong. Jump his ass, then that's, like, that's how NATO likes to jump underdeveloped countries. <laughs> so, so this article was going on about like, how it would be a bad thing to assassinate Putin. Now, keep in mind, this is not me agreeing or disagreeing with this article. I'm not a geopolitical person. I don't know if it would be a good idea. But they were, they were approaching this in a moral way. They are saying it would be bad. Now, he's the, it, was, it was his decision to do this. He should be at the top of your list. We've been... Tr we've, and here's the thing. We've been... Trying to assassinate dictators and such for long as time. We try America tried to kill Fidel Castro like 50 times. We failed every time, but we did try to kill him. And he wasn't even like a threat to us. Like him personally. You know, like you you, you could say that like, oh, he could align himself with the communists and have like missile bases set up there. I mean, that's how the Cuban Missile Crisis happened. But the country itself wasn't really a threat. It was potentially uh, by proxy through the uh, the Soviets. But then even after Soviet Russia fell, like they I think they were still trying to trying to assassinate this dude. And so it, the concept, whether or not you agree that was a good or bad thing, the, the concept of assassinating a political leader isn't exactly that I don't believe is that out of line, especially when they're the person that <laughs> dictates whether or not the war happens. Eh. I'm just saying. I think Robo Jocks, there was this movie called Robo Jocks. And it's it's this it's this B movie. Wait, who uh Oh, let me play this. This is what Luna has to say. Okay, I'm gonna mend on my thoughts so far because maybe then you have something to give your own input on, but the, like, the polyamory thing is, like, you say it would be hard to put that into video games, but, like, I do game design, right? Like, I'm pretty sure I can just, like, make ten of the same character models and then the developers can put ten of the same scripts, and then you can test out how it is to romance um, all ten of them. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we'd have to replace them with like different backstories and different character models and shit over time. But if you have one template, you can basically re repeat that. So, especially triple. A studios, I don't understand why they don't do that shit. They have the budget to. I don't understand it. Like, sure, if you have 10, 10 people in a game, maybe some of them would not be into, like, polyamory. So then you approach them, and then if they know you already have 
three people that you romance are like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not into that, but we can still be friends, you know? Or maybe sometimes there will be like a little bit of infighting in your like, you know, your your group of partners and you have to like calm, calm them down <laughs> or like spend time with them. <laughs> like separately or together to increase their like uh you know affection rate <laughs> like there's so many ways to go about that and the same thing with the immorality with killing people is there's so many ways to write a film but then the fact that people go oh don't shoot him he's unharmed like if he operates the entire thing of course you're gonna shoot him like, we need to make those kinds of games enjoyable from a a player's kind of perspective, right? And even though not everybody will enjoy that kind of game where they can, you know, shoot the leader of a cult or get 10 girls in their red, some people will. And it's important that when you design a game or any other type of content, you know what demographic you're, you know, catering towards. So I, I feel like, I feel like it's, it's, um, you know, I feel like there's a de demographic for that sort of stuff. <laughs> I mean, it might be a very small demographic, but if polyamorous people want to see that stuff, then let them have it. Like I said, it should be easy for AAA game studios to do that. They have the means. Yeah, you're. I I, I agree with you to a sense. Um, they certainly do have the budget. I think. I mean, I can't really speak. I mean, I'm not a game designer, unlike you. Um. I don't think it's so much that they don't have the budget is is that they it, it's a matter of justifying using the budget because a lot of these big AAA companies they're usually um more often than not they're um public companies meaning that they have multiple investors and while the main company usually owns the majority of the company usually you know like in order to keep the majority of the company you have to have 51% of the shares. So the other 40, 49% are... Wait, no, 51? Yeah, 51 shares. And then the other 49 are spread across the investors. And so... But even then, they will... You still have to kind of pander to them to keep them investing in you. I think that's one of the reasons. It, there, there's probably a multiple, multitude, multitude of reasons. And this is not me, like, quite, um, exact, yeah, you're, you're right. I, I think that is a thing they should, they could do. It's just, I just don't think they, um, I don't think they just, they don't, they don't bother because they're, they, 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 they're not willing to, it, that's the other thing is like, it, it's, it's also a willingness to say to these people, like, listen, it would be really cool. Trust me on this. Although maybe they don't want replayability, maybe they want them be like, no, no, just make a sequel. You make more money that way. We don't make, we don't get more money if they replay a game. Like, what? You want them to buy one game? No, we want them to buy multiple games. That way we get more money. You know, you know, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm not a game developer. I'm not an expert in any of this, but I'm just, I'm just trying to explain, trying to rationalize why that kind of thing would happen. I don't believe it's ideal. I think it would be great the way you have it. Um, and that's kind of sort of why, like, indie games do that more. Because they are allowed to experiment. Because they are generally owned by one company. And therefore, they, they're not obligated to any other voice. Say, like, an investor or such. And they might have a couple investors. But, like, even then, they're still allowed to. And you're, and you're generally, yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't think the reason they don't do it is because they don't have the resources or the budget. I just don't think they don't do it because they can't 
I, I just I just don't think they're just willing enough <laughs> for whatever reason. They they probably they probably themselves just don't think that it would uh, attract a lot of people. But again, like you say, more and more people are getting into that kind of stuff. Like you seeing more openness about that kind of thing. So yes, I I I do believe that more games in the future should um, explore those kinds of things. And when it comes to morality, and that's in terms of polyamory, in terms of morality, it, you, they do give you those choices sometimes where it's like, oh, there's a bad guy. Do you want to kill him or not? They, but they'll treat killing a dude as evil or they'll treat it as renegade. They'll treat it as, they won't treat it as, because like, and these, a lot of these games, they, they kind of, Try to make it so that, like, oh, you want to do the the righteous thing, blah 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 blah. You know, you want you want to you don't want to be the you don't want to be the crazy renegade that just kills whoever. You want to be the you want to be you want to be the righteous good guy. And that's and then if you want to be the best goodest guy ever, you have to not kill people who even if they deserve it. <laughs> so I think um, games in the future when they're dealing with morality, I think they should be a little more ambiguous than that. Even if they give you the choice, uh, in those in those other kind of games, um, again, they it kind of sort of punishes you by cutting cutting off access to certain things because in terms of Mass Effect, you can't um, access certain dialogue options unless you are extreme one way or the other, right? I think in Mass Effect Three they did that a little bit more where it's like it wasn't so much you you had you had Paragon and Renegade points, but you also had influence, and I think that's what dictated whether or not you had a uh, a certain option or not. Uh, but the first two games was like, are you good? Are you good enough? Did you do enough good things? Were you were you a goody goody boy? Then you get to say the nice thing to people. Yeah, I mean, it can be like, oh, I did the mon uh, monogamous pacifist route, but now I have to replay it. But the side of the game where I start a harem and have all my partners violate the Geneva Convention is in the name of love. Yeah, again, like it absolutely, yeah, that absolutely should be a cool thing. Um, uh, th th that's, th that's how I would make my game. Well, yeah, it, but it's, it's just that uh, unfortunately a lot of these games where they have morality systems, they they lock you out of certain things. Obviously, they'll lock you out of certain things if you're, like, extreme one side. But they'll also lock you out of a lot of things if you're middle of the road. Which I think is kind of bullshit. You know what I mean? Because it's like... I think Baldur's Gate kind of had the best... Like, the ones where, like, morality isn't a spectrum, I think, I think they're the ones that do it best. Uh, when I played through Baldur's Gate 3, I kind of did, like, the ends justifying the means kind of sense. Now, mind you, I did it mostly just to see what would happen, but there are cases where you can do a pretty egregious action in order to get a, power, a character more powerful. And sometimes people would object to it saying like, hey, that was a bad thing, but it doesn't punish you. The game doesn't go out its way to say like, hey, because you did this, you can't do this now. Uh, it's just that the NPCs will just say something, and then the game goes on. Um... So, I think the big example in this is uh, Asterion? What was, the, what was the vampire guy's name? I keep... Wow. Uh, Asterion? Carry on? Yeah. So, yeah, the vampire guy. The gay vampire guy. Um... Asterion, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's the whole thing where he confronts his former vampire lord. Vampire lord is trying to go through a ritual that will make him even more powerful to, like, ascend him. And, of course, you have to stop him. And then when you stop the dude, you can either free all of the thralls, or you can sacrifice them to do the thing that you're that his previous vampire lord was going to do and make Asterion the ascended vampire. And I thought, well, if this was real life, I wouldn't do this. But I'm playing a video game. Let's do the rat option. <laughs> and 
and so you can go through with it. You, you put the <laughs> and like they have you like etch uh like a like like a like a symbol in the back of the vampire lord because like. Uh, before he couldn't be harmed unless he had a certain mark on his back, and then, but then, um, because Asterion knew the mark, he's like, "Let me use my parasite powers to look through your eyes, and I'll guide you how to mark the thing, and then he'll be one of the thralls that'll get sacrificed when I go the whatever." And then, yeah, all the thralls like just fucking explode, and he gets. A couple extra powers. Uh, is it worth it in a moral sense? Maybe not. But in a video game, it's fucking rad. <laughs> so I went through with it. And so, yeah, I did a lot of decisions like that where it's just like, yeah, we're just going to do the most egregious thing, but in the name of getting more power so that we can fight the big bad evil guy. And while NPC, certain NPCs would react to you and say, hey, that was kind of fucked up, the game doesn't go, hey, that was kind of fucked up. We're going to... We're gonna prevent you from doing this other thing. It might, it might prevent access to certain things, but then again, so to, like to, to certain story things. But then again, everything does, not because of morals or romance, because of but like every little decision changes the story in a little way. So you know, like it'll branch, like the story branches off, but because of multiple things, not because. Like you know, who you chose to, you know, like uh, what quests you do, what I items you want, what blah blah blah, it, like all these little, all, a lot of these little things. So it does it in a more subtle way. Right? Which I think is the best way to do that kind of stuff. The other way is what the Fable system did and says, it just gives you a bar, it gives you a spectrum, where it's just like are you evil or are you good? Or you Mass Effect the same way. It's like, oh, you're, oh, you did some evil things, you get some bad boy points. And because you have your bad boy points, you could do more evil things. And you get powers. And then for some reason, they have flies fly around you. Because apparently, if you're evil, that also means you never shower. Like, that was a thing. Like, like the more evil you got, the more flies you have flowing around you. Which is like, okay. That... Okay. I, I can't be a clean evil man? Okay. Sure. I mean, whatever. It was a little. It was a little touch thing that they did. You have a halo around you if you were good. What if I wasn't religious? What if I'm not an angel? I'm just a dude that does good things. I'm a good boy. That doesn't make me an angel. That just makes me a good good boy. Uh, so yeah. So I think that's the best way that they handled it. Uh, the other. I think the less than subtle, but I also think almost as well way is when it's not so much the, uh, I mean, I, Baldur's Gate does this too. It's, it's not about morality, but how the NPCs perceive you. So uh, yeah. And they, they do do this in Baldur's Gate three, where you do a certain action and it'll say this party member approved this party member disapproved. And then if you do too many things where a party member would disapprove, like if he's, if he's a good guy and you do too many evil things, eventually he'll be like, yeah, fuck this. I'm out. Um, Bioware games, yeah, no. Bioware games, kind of, no. They, they did that in, in, um... Oh, God. What was the... Oh, God. The, 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 the third game was called Inquisition. Dragon something. Anyway. Um... The Telltale games, especially. You do something and they'd be like... Oh, so and so will remember that, you know what I mean? So I think that's the best way to do it because it's just like it's not gonna judge you. The game in itself isn't judging you, the characters are, which makes sense. So And then that that'll determine where the story goes. Memoed, okay. Luna has another memo. Okay, so um I'm gonna talk about my special interest for a bit. Um I I'm really obsessed with, with watching the train wreck go down that is Yandere Simulator. Now, as you may know, Yandere's a pedophile. That's not what this is about. Um, there were these kids who tried to make a better version of 
yonder simulator by making it more progressive because they realize there are only white Japanese people in there or like white Asians, you know, and not like actual people of co color. So then what, what these, like, I believe they were teens to young adults, right? What these people did <laughs> were they replaced all the rivals with with POC and disabled and you know LGBT people. Problem with that is that you have to kill the rivals. <laughs> so they didn't entirely think that true, but it's the but it's still fucking funny. I I I know most about the Yandere Dev si situation. I used to follow him, and I also was um, following the development of Yandere Sim. I actually thought it was going to be a really cool game, but then all this other shit came down, and then it turns out he's also like it. it before it was like. At first, it was like, yeah, this guy is very immature. He keeps bitching about emails. It's like, you don't have to... You don't, you don't need to... You don't need to... You, know, you, you can ignore the emails. You, you know. It's like, he'll, he'll depict his guy himself being flooded with emails. Like, literally flooded. Like, they come out of the screen. And it's like, you really need to answer all those emails? And then, like, he'll kind of belittle people for, like, asking them dumb questions. You know what I mean? And it's like... Yeah, yeah, pedo in a crib, yeah. I didn't know about the racist, but, but, um, yeah, but then, but then more and more came out where it's like, he's all, he's also a really, he, he's a really bad person. He's not just immature. He's awful. Um, and, and then there's the more creepy, but not, the, the, the interesting was like, not to, the, the creepy, but not egregious. Like his lust for Samus Aran, and apparently he has a a sex doll that looks like her, and it's like not awful but creepy. Um, uh, but then yeah, it turned out he tried to groom a, at least one girl, like underage girl, I think, or maybe even had a relationship with her. I forget. But yeah, it yeah, it turns out he's awful, awful man. And I do remember. I don't know if this is the same one you were talking about, but I remember another game being made as a response to Yandere Sim. I don't remember it being progressive, like you said. It just seemed like they were just making a better version. But then it turned out it was... It, it, it wasn't real. Like, after a couple weeks, they were like, yeah, we're not actually making this. We were just kind of trolling. Um, what was it called? Like, My Love Letter or something like that? But yeah, I, I don't know if that's the same game. Um... I, I don't even know if I'm still... He put an Easter egg in the game called Corona-chan, which lets you kill people when you come near them. Corona-chan was, I think, was a thing outside of Yandere Sim. I remember there was a bullet chant. I remember when that was a scare in America. Um, I mean, it was a scare all around the world, but there was a scare in America in the early 10s, I think, because I remember it was during the Obama administration. People were, you know, because they let one guy who was infected with it in America. There wasn't an outbreak. It was treated as well as you could, bringing a guy that was infected with Ebola. And apparently he survived it. I imagine they gave him, like, a cocktail, like a fucking big-ass cocktail of drugs and all that shit, but I remember the guy being like, yeah, I actually feel better. <laughs> like, better than I did before contracting Ebola, but uh, that's... But I remember there was a, a character named Ebola-chan, and, like, her... She had twin tails, but they look like the, the parasites, like the little stringy parasite things. His version is ever so slightly racist. Oh. Oh. Oh, I remember. Oh, okay, I can kind of see why. Yeah. It was originally called Wuhan Chan. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was. That was a whole deal. Not to die. Well, digress a little bit. It was. I remember when people were pointing out the hypocrisy of 
reporters calling it the Wuhan flu at first. And it's like, well, because we didn't know the we didn't know the scale this would come out, and we just knew that this was, you know, from Wuhan, from a supposedly from a lab in Wuhan, and when they started calling it, you know, COVID or whatever, people were being like, oh, why are you covering up where it's from? And it's like, ah, uh, because one, it got really bigger than it was, and also, uh, a lot of people were being attacked out of it. People that had nothing to do with this. Sometimes people would say, like, oh, well, the Spanish flu, would people attack people, Spanish people when Spanish flu came out? I'm like, I'm pretty sure they did. And they didn't change the name because they were way less progressive back then. Let's look at this. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the China dress, yeah. Gotcha. Um. Okay, um. Yeah, so that was... <laughs> uh, and it's like, yeah, I think it's better that they changed the name of Han Flu, because I think a lot of people were taking it out on the wrong people. You know what I mean? Like, there was a lot of Asian hate coming out of, you know, in America. And it's like, yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> we should probably... And then you had people insist to call it the China flu. And it's like, you realize you're kind of hating the, the violence? They didn't care. Because they, they, they didn't care. They didn't. They probably hated them themselves. So, of course, they were. It was funny. I, I, and, I mean, mind you, it's not just from, like, Americans. Like, I had received. I know I told this story before. I had received... I wish I still had that pamphlet. But one day, a couple of years ago, I was at a CBS or some shit. And this old lady, this old aging lady, approached me with a petition that merely said, Stop the evil CCP. I don't know how a petition is going to stop the Chinese Communist Party, but fine. Not exactly the biggest fan of the Chinese Communist Party. I'll sign it. It didn't ask. It only asked for a name and a, and, a, and, a, and a signature. So it's like, I feel like it didn't, like, I didn't quite understand the purpose of this petition. Because it's like, oh, well, either petition itself is to stop the thing, right? To get enough people to, you know, where they hand the petition saying, like, hey, this is bad. You got to stop that. And then, you know, if they agree, then they'll stop. Uh, or, 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 it's a way to get you on a mailing list, right? You put your name and address and your phone number and your email and all that shit. So it's like, ah, oh, okay, they're gonna send me fucking pamphlets. They're gonna send me anti-China communist pamphlets. But that wasn't the case. Uh, so they just asked for a name and signature. So I'm like, okay. And then they hand me a pamphlet. And it was all about, like, the evils of the CCP. And I'm like, this is, I, I mean, it makes points, but, it, what, but, oh, but, but, but. It really, really, really tried to hammer the fact that it was the Chinese communists that spread intentionally corona. And I was like, this is some... Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm looking farther into this pamphlet, and it's like... Trying to figure out exactly what the angle is with this. Because it's like, this is obviously an organization that made this pamphlet or whatever. And it turns out it was, um, it has to do with a fringe religious group called the Fulon Da. And I think that's how it's pronounced. Oh, the Falun Da? Fulon Da. That word. And, uh, they're apparently like a fringe religious group that was deemed a cult by the Chinese government. Whether or not, I have no idea whether or not they're a cult. I don't know. I didn't really look that much into it. Uh, they are affiliated with the Epoch Times, which is a conservative Chinese newspaper. Um, and then they also did this show everywhere called Shen Yun. And... 
there there's a, a um in the mid or oh, uh, the mid tens there was a meme going around about how this Shen Yun show was being advertised everywhere. Like you just see like posters for this shit like on every on like every other store. And on the surface, it just comes off as like a sh uh, like a like a like a musical with like traditional Chinese dance and music. They show like a girl in like a very flowing pastel uh, dress, like spinning. It's like okay, yeah, it's gonna be like this. Traditional Chinese uh, performance. And then I read an article about what the show actually is, and it's a lot of anti-communist propaganda. <laughs> and frankly, also uh, pretty like homophobic, too. Because it's implying that the Chinese Communist Party like tries to spread homosexuality for some reason. And uh, there would be like imagery of like China being washed away by a tsunami, and then on on the water, there's a reflection of Karl Marx. Like, it's like weird shit like that. And then a few years later, during the Trump administration, they just went full mask off during the, uh, the advertisements. Before the Trump became president. Before Trump, be the, the Trump, no. Before Trump became president, all the advertisements on television, because this was also heavily advertised on TV, it would just be like, 5,000 years of Chinese culture, blah, blah, blah. Bring bring the dance and music of China alive through Shen Yun. You know, and it's just like, again, it's just a very surface thing of, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's performance of water. But the show was the same. The show was the same, like this very subversive um, anti-communist uh, anti propaganda. When Trump became president, the mask came off. And now the advertisement says, China, before communism. <laughs> Experienced China before it was taken over by communism and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. And I think that now he's no longer in office. They kind of toned that down a little bit more. I think they might mention communism, but I don't think it's like so anti it or whatever. But yeah, but it, but the show, as far as I know, remained the same. It was, it was kind of interesting. And then I saw a booth for the Falun Da at a local, like, fair. Like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. They're just trying to set up shop in this town. I, I don't, may, maybe they're cold. I don't know. Ah, 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 maybe. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. And so that was. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Yandere Dev. Yeah. Yeah, so I heard all the weird shit about Yandere Dev, and then... I'm still curious about the game. Like, what he's what he does with it, but at the same time, it's like, I'm never going to support this dude. I mean, I didn't... I never did before, but... Like... I was like... Only because... Not because I want to play the game, or I think this is going to be a good game, but because... I wonder if he's going to try to... Like, it'd be really weird for a guy to climb out of a train wreck... And then he comes out with, like, a decent game. And it's like... But then it's like, are people going to forgive him for the egregious shit if that happens? I don't know. Like I said, it's more of a morbid curiosity than anything else. It's just more... Like, I'm not on his side in any bit. It's just more like... That'd be really weird. That'd be really weird and funny if he, like... If he released Yandere Simulator and it's, like, this beloved game. And then, uh-oh, all of his awful shit is suppressed... And then, like, a year or two later, somebody comes out with a video essay saying, like, yeah, this guy's a bad person. Why are you playing this game? <laughs> like, I, the, imagine that's the, like, one called the good ending. Actually, that'd be more of the bad ending. Not for, not for Yandere Dev, but for everyone. Um, but yeah. Uh, what else can I babble about? Um... <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what the... Uh, it, I'm guessing this 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 podcast of sorts is just going to be... It's going to start off with a topic, and then it's just going to... It's just going to become a, just a ramble of other bullshit. You know what I mean? Just, just see where this takes me. I honestly didn't do as much work as I wanted to do preparing the outline for this, because I didn't really know much much else about what else I could expand upon. Like, I knew that... I knew I can go on um, about this polyamory, whatever, uh, stuff, but 
I didn't really know, um, yeah, let me, whoops. Dude, a, a 17 year old had to explain to him what cup sizes were. He's almost as old as you are, but a hey, wait, wait, wait. 17 year old had to explain to him what cup sizes were. Had to explain to him what cup sizes were. He's almost as old as you are, but he had a 17-year-old, a someone who is close to my age, explain to someone who is close to your age what cup sizes are and how they work. I don't think he can climb back from that whatsoever. I don't think he could climb back from... 10 years of fucking around in a Unity engine and then eventually ending up almost fucking a kid, okay? <laughs> like, I don't even know how you get to that point being a dev. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I, like I said, I... I virtually guarantee that's not gonna happen. I just think that would be really weird to see. <laughs> I, I don't think the game's ever going to come out in full. It's not. I, I'm, I'm certain. I'm certain. I would bet money that the game's never going to come out. I mean, it would be very low odds because... Or high odds. I wouldn't get much of a payout is what I'm saying. Like, what bookie's going to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a lot of money for that game never coming out. Like, you... you for likely put money into the long shot... Because then you only have to give them five bucks, and then it's like, yeah, no, it turned out the game came out. It's really good. Here's five million dollars because no one bet it because no one bet on your side. Everyone bet it against you. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. By cup sizes, you mean breast sizes, right? I, that. That, that's actually more confusing than the other stuff. Like, it's not nearly as egregious, but that's really weird in the sense that it doesn't really explain anything. Like, if it, if it turned out he was, like, that immature, like, if he had other cases of being immature in terms of sex, like, I can see that, but that dude was horny as shit, so... Like he was like if he wasn't horny, I can see him not understanding cup sizes. But the dude's nothing but horny. In a bad way, too. Not horny in the fun way. He's horny in the not fun way. Uh so that was Like I said, like, there's that whole thing about... I mean, the most egregious is that he apparently groomed and or had a relationship with a teenager. Teenage girl, I remember. And then... The funnier thing... <laughs> the funnier thing... Was... Him allegedly having a Zero Suit Samus sex doll. Not nearly as egregious, but a lot funnier. <laughs> Oh, he got really mad when they nerfed her breast size, and it, they they nerfed her body in a sense. They made um they gave her smaller breasts and a smaller ass in uh, Ultimate, and he was so pissed about it. And it's like, yeah, it kind of sucks, but well, not really. Again, who really gives a shit? But it's like you can kind of see why the game's E for everyone, or E10 or something like that. And it's like, they don't want to make this game... And it's not like people are going to get outraged. I don't think that's why they did it. I think that they just don't want people to think this is a game for perverts. Uh, I remember in... Uh, they had a super, uh, Street Fighter tournament televised on ESPN. ESPN tried to delve into esports for a bit, because ESPN needs... They're going to cover as many sports as they can if it gives them money. Uh, when they had the poker boom, that was a big thing for them. In in the in the mid aughts, the poker got really really big, and so you know 
they would televise the World Series of poker tournaments and all this shit. And that was, you know, because that was a new sport that ESPN can, you know, can cover because there's only so many sports that, only, only so many major sports that a sports station can cover, you know, basketball, football, soccer, baseball, you know what I mean? So if there was a new sport, they're going to do that. And then that kind of, it got kind of, I wouldn't say thrown to the wayside. It's still big before the poker boom, but it's not as big as during the poker boom. You'll still see, you know, poker tournaments being televised and stuff. And, and, the, and the payouts get bigger because more people are playing all that stuff. So that means it, because those things will have buy-ins, meaning that, and the pool, the prize pool always goes higher the more people participate, right? Because they're all putting in money. Um, so the prize pool will actually get bigger depending on how you join in. So usually you won't find out how much, what first prize is until like the very end of registration or whatever, uh, for the tournament. And then, um, as I said, so after the poker boom, they were trying to look for other stuff to cover esports game, a thing. Uh, a commentator actually got pissed off at that. Like, he's like, yeah, they're advertising, they're, they're showing fucking, what his name is, like, Coward or something like that, and he was like, yeah, they're doing this stupid League of Legends thing, and it's like, if they keep doing it, I'm gonna leave. And then he did, which, kind of a stupid reason to leave the station, but whatever. Like, you don't have to cover it. <laughs> you can cover the regular sports balls, you, you. But then again, I heard that his show is, like, really weird. But that's another Anyway, um, so they had a Street Fighter tournament, and they edited the game so it doesn't uh, zoom in on the girls' assets as much. Because like, this was, I think this was four or five. And so you had Jury, and the Feet Lady, uh, and you know, they... they, they during their specials, it, the camera will zoom around them and it, it will zoom in on certain parts of them. And I saw a video once uh, showing the comparing, comparing the, the original game and then what they showed on ESPN. Oh, let me... All right, I'll get to that memo in a sec. And a lot of people are like, why would they censor the game? Oh, uh, they get, oh, they, because they don't want, oh, SJWs and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking just like, no, I just think they don't want this game thinking, th th this game that they're showing to a general audience, a general sports audience, I don't, I just think that they just, they don't want this game to look like it's made for perverts. I think that's the reason why. I don't think it's to be family friendly, because again, it's just these very quick shots. It, they're very tasteful too. Street Fighter isn't a very lewd game. Not nearly as much as, like, Dead or Alive. But, you know, it does its, does its fan service at times. And I guess they just thought, like, eh, maybe we should tone that down so that people don't get weirded out. Like, the people that are normally watching football and shit like that. Or it's like, what the fuck? It, what? So the, the, you got... This is, this is a perv game. It's a game for perverts. <laughs> Why are they showing pervert games on my screen? Yeah, because because you know sports are almost almost always like a family family friendly thing when it's shown on like broadcast television. Like, there's almost never swearing. There's almost never in America that is. I'm sure European is fucking talking about soccer and football in Europe. Probably a different, but um, yeah. So like they toned down the game because they thought that pervert. I don't know. Whatever. At least that that's my theory. A game theory. Dare I say. Okay, so the way this conversation went, if I remember correctly from the the logs, is um the girl was saying how she's attracted to taller people, right? Because that's like normal for a seventeen year old girl to like taller right, right. guys. That's not bad, but she's like, yeah, I want uh, my dudes to be at least like six feet, and then. Um, John Depp goes, well, am I out of the picture then because I'm only 5'11 <laughs> and, and 
the girl goes like worryingly like oh no no it's okay don't worry about it and then uh he goes well i want my 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 boobs and my girl to be as big as as the girl pit and the 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 17 year old goes do you even know how cup sizes work and then yon dip goes wait no no because my, my my boobs and my girl to be as big as as the girl pit and the 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 17 year old goes do you even know how cup sizes work and then yon dip goes no no i don't like how do they work and then the the kid has to ex explain like the 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 way it works like with your shoulder con uh circumference and shit like of course the straps have to fit around your shoulders so that's what the numbers are for and then the letters are for like the actual booby part you know um and she's like yeah i i have a cups and then <laughs> yon dev goes oh wow that's huge but <laughs> because you have such a slim sexy body huh and i'm like throwing up at that point because this dude is like 39 38 something like he's in his late late he's in his late late 30s and he's talking to this girl who is like almost an adult which isn't a problem in and of itself like if it's just like friendship or like business related talk, then personally, it's not a problem to me. But this started going into, oh, can you ex explain to me how cup sizes work? And at that point, it's just inappropriate. That's like an instant block for me. You know, like, no, ew, what the fuck? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. Now, if, well, okay. I thought he was confused because of another reason. But the fact that he thought that there are rankings is pretty fucking funny. Like, did he think that there's a bigger size than A? Like, it's like, oh, she's got triple S boobs. <laughs> like, yeah. like, they think that, like, it's rarity of, like, cards or something like that. Collectible cards. So they have, like, the ranks that's like, oh, super SSR for super, super rare. Um... That's the only thing I can think of, like, why you thought A was big. Uh, I thought, originally, the reason why he might have been confused is because Japan, they do their cup sizes differently. They're a little more granular. Um, so, like, the normal, I guess, like, the, the, the average woman, in America at least, uh, or I guess, I guess the West, um, their cup sizes go from A to double D. Right. Obviously, you can be bigger, but then you would have to go to like a specialty store. But like, if you go to like Victoria's Secret or whatever, or whatever clothing store, you're probably gonna see A through double D. Um, Japan's their 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 ranges. If they if they had the similar amount of boobs, like would go up to like K or something like that. I forget exactly. But, like, again, it's more granular. It's not like, oh, A is this size. and You know what I mean? Like, it, it could be... Like, an A cup in America could go up to, like, F or something like that. And then an F in Japan would be a B in America and stuff like that. But there would be every letter between then. I don't know if they actually make those sizes. I, I, whatever. But that's what I always heard. Because I, I remember watching a video where somebody was described as having, like a G cup, and then somebody commented, it's like, wait, what do you mean a G cup? She looks like she's barely a B, or, or, or C. And it's like, and then I actually explained to them, I was like, oh no, Japan does their sizes differently. Like, that's that's just, they they just have more letters. That's why she has such a, why it looks high, yeah. It said A was big because the girl was skinny, so her boobs was huge in them because he only, oh, okay. Wait, is this new? Oh no, that's not new. Uh, for some reason, it showed. Okay, if I remember, taller people. Oh, okay, for some reason it was showing as new. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, okay. All right, it just kept showing the Discord. So I thought you'd put it in a new mess, um, Menmo, but it was something else. Anyway, so... Yeah, but the... <laughs> oh, so he thought it was relative to her body. That's why... I, oh, okay. Yeah, that's not how that works. It's just... It's just absolute size, like the size of the... And the shoulder um, width, but yeah. It's it's not relative to the body. Like, you could go arm to boob uh, ratio, that's a thing, but that's not, that doesn't determine your bra size. That's just a ratio that guys do, where it's like the size of her boob compared to the size of her arm or something like that, or like the distance between them if she just sat with her arms forward. Like, I, I just remember hearing that term, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um... Also, actually, let me, I'm going to take a short break. I got to, I'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. That story about Yandere Dev reminded me, that's not the most embarrassing thing I've ever heard about a man having to be explained something about a female anatomy. Uh, there is a much worse this guy, uh, yeah. Um. There, okay. So, when I was on the Something Awful forums, in the mid-aughts, we had our share of what we would now call lol cows. But back then, they were just the gooniest, right? So, it's like, uh, SA forum, Something Awful forum members were called goons because some other site referred to them as goons, and that just stuck. But then you had the, the the concept, like the stereotype of the goon being basically the modern, the, the, the equivalent of like today, uh, of like of a, just think of like the worst Reddit, Redditor stereotype, fedora wearing neck beard, that kind of bullshit. So the quote unquote lol cows, the one that are ridiculed a much on the site were just basically being like, oh, these are, these are goon ass goons. These are True goons, whatever. There was this one dude who called himself Two Worlds. The reason he called himself that is because his name was Ariel. That's not a dox. He publicly said his name all the time. Um, my translator is in work. But he goes by the name Two Worlds. Yeah. True goon. Yeah, but now goon means something else today. So. <laughs> Thanks, Gene Hollywood. Uh, testing. There we go. So. Yeah, uh. The reason why this guy called himself Two Worlds is because he believed that humanity was split among two kinds of people. The, t the upper world, which is basically what we would call normies, right? People that don't fuck with the internet in any sense, or, and they're not perverted or, like, morally compromised, or, you know what I mean? Like, just, they're just pure, pure-hearted people that never fuck with the internet. Those were the upper world people. And then the underworld people were internet people, but also like drug users and perverts and all that shit. So basically anyone that wasn't a normie. He, called, he believed that he truly believed he was the only person in the world that crossed the line between the two worlds. Not understanding that virtually everyone has their sort of dark side or their, you know what I mean? Like, that, it's not black and white. But he truly believed that not only it was like that, he was the only one that crossed, the, crossed between the worlds or some shit like that. And basically he just had, like, demented protagonist syndrome or something like that. Main character syndrome, but, like, on a whole other level. In fact, he believed his life was being uh, 
Um, Chronographed? No. Anyway, whatever. Uh, his his life was being uh, written in another dimension. That they're making a that like Marvel in another dimension was making a comic about his life, which is crazy because his life was pretty at least uneventful and at most pathetic. He grew up a, a Lutheran in some small town in Mississippi. He was like pretty chastised person. And then he just had this fucked up view of sex and pornography and all that stuff like that. Like, and um, he also had, he considered his six personas. Now he wasn't, he didn't have dissociative identity syndrome. He didn't have split personalities. He just figured that like his different emotions were different personas for some reason like he couldn't he didn't quite grasp the concept that like you know we have different moods and different wants and then sometimes each of those needs or wants uh overtake other ones you know what i mean so it's like there are times where you're horny and sometimes where you're not so horny well the times where he believed he where he was horny he believed that was the brute he, he had a persona he called the brute and that was the times that he was horny now, the reason he called it the Brute was because he originally called it the Hulk, but he changed it because he figured it, it, he would... <laughs> he thought he would break interdimensional copyright. I'm not kidding. He thought that his... his <laughs> he thought that his multidimensional self is like equivalent or whatever would get sued by Marvel if he referred to himself as the Hulk when he is, quote-unquote, hulking out. So he changed it to the Brute. Not fucking kidding. <laughs> now, the reason why that whole cup size thing reminded me of this dude was because eventually, I mean, I could go on hours about this dude, but I'll just cut to the point I was making. He was at a goon meet. Right? Something awful goons, goons would have a, a yearly meetup. The biggest one was in 05. They went to Las Vegas. And they took him to a strip joint. And he got all sorts of strip dances. And then, like, that changed his life. Because it's like he touched a girl for the first time. I mean, like, this guy was in his mid-20s. And he's acting like it was this fucking breakthrough that he had. Where it's like, I get to touch boobs whenever I want. You get to, you get to pay girls money to let them touch? To let you touch them? Wow! And then apparently the other goons set up a meeting or, or, or uh, a, uh, uh, a, a, a quote-unquote meeting with one of the dancers which by the way their name was Raven so having to read about that part and listen to it was a little bit kind of weird but yeah I mean Raven does make a good stripper name but still I'm not surprised to hear that. Uh, especially if they're like a goth chick, but yeah. So basically, the the thing that was written... Chronograph? Wait, chronicle? Chronic, chronographed? Yeah, anyway. I don't know why I keep forgetting words. Um. So, apparently the other... So, you know, he keeps getting dances from this raven tripper. The other goons are paying for it. Because, like, they just want to egg this guy on and break his, pop his touch virginity. <laughs> like, like, his, like, the, like, the first seal of virginity, which is touching a girl. Like, I don't know what you call that. Like, like, that's not even first base. That's, like, that, that, that's, that's the dugout. I, like, what, like, what is that? Like. <laughs> That's just being on the bullpen. Like, that's not even, like, you're not even hitting a base yet. Tiff would straight up wake me up at night to tell her her hor horniest demon wanted to talk with me, and then I say, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, just tell her not to wake me up too much. This dude, on the other hand, had six personas. One of them was the brute. The other one was, he called the saint, which was his religious side. He had uh, a persona called Mr. C, because C, like, his last initial was C, 
and he was a teacher or a substitute teacher for a short time, but he quit because he couldn't handle dealing with rowdy kids. Like he just he just pathetically failed. And then I think he had Party Man, which was his persona when he partied, basically just whenever he drank. And then he had one called the Puppet Master and the one called the Temptist. I think the Temptist was when he was angry and the Puppet Master was when he believed he was like he, he, he was fucking with other people by being the way he was. Like he, he was basically like the oh, oh, you're, oh, you're I was I was just kidding. That the pathetic thing I did? No, that was an act or whatever. Like that was the puppet master. Like he did all these things legitimately, but then he would try to be like, "Oh no. I I made you laugh at me. That that was my trick. I trolled you." <laughs> you know what I mean? And the reason I'm able to remember each of those is because he said that like each he they would be in pairs. They would con one would contradict with another one. So Mr. C would contradict the party man. The brute would contradict the the saint or whatever. So they're like whatever. Tiff had twelve ish, but I'm pretty sure it was no, more of a role play autism thing because she didn't have DID. Okay, I'm I'm sure this guy didn't actually have that either. Like I said, I think these were just to justify the way he felt because he just didn't quite grasp the concept that people can be different at times, right? They can have it be in moods. They were moods. They weren't even personalities. They were moods people would have. Sometimes you're horny, sometimes you're not. That's not because the brute took over. That's just because you're just hornier than usual. You know what I mean? Uh, he saw some cleavage. And, the, and like he, he would tell, tell stories about how he worked at a movie theater. And he would say that, like he looked at this girl and he would have brute attacks. Which basically just meant he was just having sexual thoughts about her. Anyway. So, anyway, anyway, anyway. He's about to get this... Uh, Apparently, I don't know if this was actually true or not, or they were just trolling him. They said that they set him up with a like extra meeting, like an out call with this stripper. And so he and his friends, the other goons, are hanging out in the hotel room. And he actually <laughs> he wanted to take a picture of him with his friends so that he could title it uh, the defla deflowering of Ariel or something like that. Because it was gonna be it was gonna be the picture taken before he lost his virginity, but then it turned out that, that that didn't happen because they told him later that the girl was stopped by security of the hotel because she didn't she didn't have a room there. So more than likely it was a prank. Like they were just egging him on to thinking he was gonna get laid, and then he didn't. While this was happening, while he was waiting for the stripper, he actually asked one of the female goons to draw him a picture of a vagina. Because he didn't know exactly what one looked like. And so she actually drew it like a very crude drawing of a vagina. Or vulva, really. The vagina is the... A lot of people don't quite understand. The vagina is the inside part. <laughs> shorts, shorts, sword sheaths used to be called vaginas because it was where you put your sword into. Um, the whole thing, the whole package is called the vulva. Or at least most of it, I think. Whatever. Um, but yeah. So, and also he apparently kept pronouncing it Fachita, Fachita, or something. Like he never heard the word spelt or pronounced out loud, so he just he just assumed it was pronounced like Vagita. And then, because, um, he made a joke like when the the, the stripper pressed her cr crotch against his face. He made some jokes saying, like, I got vagina on my glasses. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, I got the vagina. I'm like, I got her vagina on my glasses. And they're like, you mean vagina? Yeah, that's what I meant. Anyway. So yeah, he had to have... He had had a girl draw him... Draw him crude anatomy so that he understood what to do. He was in his mid twenties. There's another funny story where, I like I said, I can go on about this dude. Like she'd tell me she felt 
a Stephanie moment coming on, when she, which in Tiffany language, or I want a triple XL strawberry milkshake, sing Kate Bush songs, and eat crisps. Okay. That actually makes a little more sense. In, in, in terms that that's, little, that's actually more um, legit identity disorder. Like, like you said, you, she didn't, probably didn't actually have that, but I mean, like, that actually sounds more legit version of other than Worlds Dude. There's another time where he's at a party, and he's drinking Smirnoff Ices, and so he gets ragged on by one of the other party mem party goers, saying like, oh, you're drinking that girly drink or some shit like that. And then he goes, oh, you think this is girly? Watch this. And then he takes an empty bottle goes to the bathroom, fills it up with water, comes back, and says, check this out, and then chugs the the, the, the Smirnoff ice bottle full of water. And then the guy's obvious, it's like, that was water, dude. I saw you do that. <laughs> Listen, if you love your Smirnoff ices, like, fucking own it. I like my girly drinks, too. I mean, I mean, I... I'd rather drink beer than Schmanoff Ice, but, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm known to get fucking daiquiris and chocolate margaritas, you know what I mean? From time to time, you know what I mean? I like my, like, my, my signature drink, like, my, my favorite drink is uh, Malibu and Coke. Which is a coconut liqueur. And Coke. Like, there's a name for every mood, because she says it's easier to help me understand exactly what she wants that way. Yeah, that... Okay. That sounds like a better explanation for that. Or it's like, I'm trying... Yeah, 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 that... I'm in a Kyle mood. <laughs> I can't just, like, tell him a friend... I'm feeling Kyle today. No. No. Kyler. Yeah. Like you're putting on a dress or putting on a suit or some shit. Anyway. Uh. Oh, the the funniest one was he's at a club and he sees this one girl and he's just building up the courage to like talk to her or some shit. And then spends like hours like thinking of something to say to her and then finally he approaches her says hey girl the black shirt I love I literally like you and then runs away I do this in a sense what do you mean I'm feeling a little you mean specifically me or like me, like the royal me. Not quite. I don't quite understand what you're saying. I mean, like, how did I do that? I wouldn't be surprised that I did, because it's, it's just something I just didn't notice. You know what I mean? But yeah, he just yelled like, hey girl in the black shirt, I really like you, and then ran away. And then when he was writing this out, because he, he would chronicle he would chronicle this stuff himself. That's how we know about it, because he typed he would write this stuff himself. Slightly self aware that what he did was pathetic, but like had no shame in sharing it. So he then goes on to say, Hopefully she didn't speak English, or else I would I would have been so embarrassed. Like hopefully she didn't understand what I said to her or whatever. Um Yeah. That was as a whole thing. Uh <sighs> I think this is gonna Well, let me um elaborate on what it is I do. And then I'm going to wrap it up because my throat is kind of going hoarse. And like I said, this is the first time I've talked this much. 
So. So I'm actually tired out a little bit. I might turn this into a video and upload it. Like when you differentiate between the version of yourself that you want to be and what you are, you have to split them up between Aaron and Raven. Oh my God. You're right. I do do that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's how I wrote. That's how I did it for the story is like Raven is like the ideal me or how, how, how I wanted to be when I was younger. Not, not today. It's how I, it, it's how I wanted to be when I was younger. Um, and then Aaron is more me, so yeah. And I was, and mind you, to be fair, I did that mostly because I didn't just want to make one guy that was me. I want, I wanted to have a supporting character, and so I would kind of, I did kind of split the two into into these char, you know, these characters for that short story. Um, but yeah, that's, but that that was intentional. So, but. I still did it. So yeah, I definitely I definitely see what you mean by that. No, no, no. No, that totally makes sense. Like I said, but Raven is my ideal me when I was younger. And that's kind of why he's younger in elf years. <laughs> He would be the same age as, as Aaron in human years, but he would be elf years younger. Because he ages... He doesn't age as quickly. So... But, um... He would be the less mature one. He would be the more... He would be the more adventurous one. He would be the more spontaneous one. He would be the more charismatic one. He would be basically what I would what I wanted to be have been when I was in my twenties, right? Where Aaron is like the more, yeah, I I'm cool with I'm cool with the way I am, <laughs> with the way I am. Like that's like that's the that's the me that like accepted who I am now. They know their shortcomings. They do kind of wish they didn't have their shortcomings, but <laughs> all four chanters have split personality type autism. <laughs> I was I was barely on 4chan. I I I I mean I didn't really I I lurked on on the essay forms too. I never really participated. I just looked. I very rarely posted. I I did have a 4chan phase for a short while. Um mainly because like just that concept was novel where it was like, "Oh, they took this like Japanese um anonymous forum and made an English version out of it." And then it turned out to be its own thing, and it kind of, kind of dark and scary a little bit. Well, I didn't peruse the boards that got really fucking scary. I just mostly went to the video game one or the Flash one. Yeah, you know I mean. So, uh, yeah, that's gonna do it. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me for my. This will probably get called. It's a pilot episode. I don't know if it went that well, because, you know, like I, like I said, I wasn't um, the most prepared for this, because I hadn't done this before. But, I mean, I do feel, I do feel, I did, yes, I did have fun. I don't regret doing this. Um, I might wait a bit till I do it again, because, like I said, it's a little bit tiring, because having to talk this much. I would like in the future to, like, have someone else to talk with, but, like, having, setting that up is a little more, you know, like, a little arduous for me. Um, and... Uh, but yeah, I did kind of enjoy this. I might edit this and upload there sometimes. Somewhere. Yeah, but I, but I am very... I'm very happy with the results. I was afraid I was going to get nervous. I was going to forget things and be like, okay, this sucks. <laughs> All right. Like I wasn't going to have enough things to talk about, but, um, I prepared a little bit by having a cup of coffee, which is more caffeine than I usually have. And so that's why I'm able to just get blah, blah, blah. Cause normally I would just be like, huh? All right. Well, Hmm. What else? Uh, uh, but yeah, but that, no, it went way better than I expected to. Like I said, it got off the rails a lot of times and they didn't quite stick on topic, but that's kind of that's kind of the thing I wanted to have anyway is more of a freeform 
feely anyway, rather than just like I stick to a topic. You know what I mean? Like, I really ra rather, honestly, I really rather just do a more general podcast where it's just me talking about me. But that's kind of a weird, like, there's no hook to that. It's just me. You have a game dev topic, uh, game, game dev topic, put me on call. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Uh,. Which is why, yeah, which is why this is called, it's not just called the True Neutral Energy, originally it was going to be called the True Neutral Realness podcast. Um, but I realized, like, that's, that sounds a little more niche, because realness, like, calling something, something realness is like a drag thing, where it's like, oh, you're showing Lady Gaga realness, because you look like you're, you're, you're in drag as Lady Gaga, you know what I mean? Um... But everyone knows what blank blank energy is, so uh, so that's that's the name of this kind of podcast is when I'm talking about neutral, well, somewhat neutral. Yeah, you know I mean, because my character is true neutral, so it's like, yeah, hey, I might as well call it that. And then, but then the umbrella term for all my podcasts is the Raven Podcastity, <laughs> Raven Cassidy's Raven Podcastity. So if I do another kind of topic, it'll be the Raven Podcast, Raven Cassidy's Raven Podcastity colon whatever. Call it Cassidy Caffeinated, Raven Podcastity's Cassidy's Caffeinated Video Game Rambles Cast, yeah. <laughs> I, long time ago, before I did this VTuber thing, I thought it'd be really funny if I did a podcast where, like, I didn't, it was, it would be a one-man podcast and I would just drink a lot of caffeine and then just ramble about whatever. Because I feel like I can do that. Well? Maybe not well is the word. Well, I can do it. Whether or not it would actually sound good is a different. But the fact, but the idea that I can talk a lot when I'm caffeinated a, a lot, that I can do. Like, that, that's, that's not the, well. And then, like, whether it's sticking to a topic or something like that. Because, yeah, if I, if I get hyper or whatever, I will, um, I will vent, I, it's gonna go everywhere. It's, it's not gonna have a straight, a thorough throughput. It's, it's just gonna be me jumping topics every, like, three minutes. So I didn't think that would be something people would want to listen to. Might as well just be a guy rambling, because it is, because that's what it would be. So, but yeah, um. I'll be back Monday with more GTA 5. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... Maybe that's what the next episode will just be. It'll be... It, will, it'll, it won't be a... Uh, I'll have, like, a topic that... Because I have to jump from something. Like, I have to start with something. I can't just be like, well, it's... it's got, well, hmm, what can I talk about? Uh... Uh... Have you seen the news today? Eh... Uh, uh, that that thing that's happening, right? Uh... Like, I have to be like, okay, we're going to talk about this first, and then whatever. So who knows? Roll the dice. And then, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just go from there. And then, so that might be my, my next... You know what I'm thinking? Oh, you know what would be a good idea? So, the week before and the week after Christmas, I already know I, know I already talked about this, but for posterity's sake... Um, the week before Christmas, the week after Christmas, I'm doing a, I usually do like a, like a special week. When I say special, I just mean like different. And it's, it's more, it's more of a present to myself than it is anyone else. I do a, I do a, a more free form stream. I just play through old shit. I don't stick with the game for more than, well, I mean... I could if I really like it, but like I don't feel I feel it feels like less pressure where it's like I start this game and then I don't know this game this game's okay uh, this game sucks let's move on to another one. I used to do that with like you know because I would have an emulator and a bunch of you know ROMs for a a PlayStation or the 3DO or the Sega Saturn. Be like oh yeah let's this game oh yeah this game's weird okay yeah let's go on to the next one you know so it would be a lot. It would be more lax, kind of cozy. 
I felt like it's more cozier because it's just me just doing whatever. And then, uh, so, and almost always those, those, the theme would be old games, mostly games from the 90s. This year, I'm going to do DOS games one week and then Windows, like 95, 98, or even 3.1, like 90s Windows type games uh, the week after. The first week will be the Raven Cla- Raven Claus's December DOS debacle, and then the week after would be the Raven Claus's Winter Windows Wonderland or some shit. I don't know. I always try to have alliteration for some reason because I thought I think that's funny. Because originally the first one was the Raven Claus's Christmas Classic, and then I had the Raven Claus's uh, Holiday Halcyon. Although I realized if I do both. December DOS and Winter Windows, like, oh man, I'm going to run out of ideas. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so, what I'm thinking, when it comes to this podcast, I'm thinking next Friday, because it will be the week before I do this, I probably do a podcast about me rambling about old games, and how much, why I like them, and why, why you Zoomers to kind of, <laughs> Why you Zoomers missed out? No, it, it would just it would just be like, hey, here's why I like him. Here's why you know you might not completely understand it, but you have to understand like the kind of yeah. You know, just put yourself like you know. Just I'm trying to explain my mindset into this, and it's just like, oh man, you know, oh man, I used to play this game. It was really cool. I'll tell you why. <laughs> probably it's probably what it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be like, oh right, there was that one game I played. It was so awesome. Yeah, me and my friend. I was at, I was at his house, and then like he had he had a copy of Doom. And he had joystick, and we played Doom, and we used all the we would we put in all the cheat codes so we'd be invincible and have all the weapons, and then we just like we just go around with the joystick and just shoot everybody, and then completing the level easier because like the code that gives you all the weapons also give you all the keys, so you get like the red key right away, and then yeah, um, maybe shit like that. You're right. I will save it for next week. Yeah, but like I said, that's a that's a little take, a little preview. Of what's coming next week. So, alright, I'm going to get going. Throat's killing me. I'm going to take a nap. I'll see you guys Monday.